listen to what amen so before i pray or anything i just want to say that god is doing something very specific in this little house amen, amen. to the people that are sitting here the people that faithfully come every week amen he is giving a deliberate message and that message is around commitment it's around a change of heart it's around living a life becoming of god's wish god's plan god's direction and we can even hear with gives testimony this morning that god is looking after you it doesn't matter what our circumstances doesn't matter if we get hijacked doesn't matter if if things go wrong there is so much that go right but we forget to go on our knees and say thank you for that that goes right and yes father show me how i must deal with that that goes wrong what is it that i should learn what is it that i should know you are saying amen because even though satan is responsible for that that goes wrong with us god has a plan we see the story of job and we know the story of job god allowed satan to challenge job but he said you cannot kill him amen why because job was faithful amen hallelujah so last week monkhasi spoke about total transformation hallelujah so if you weren't here last week please it's on youtube go and listen amen go back to the beginning of january if you haven't been here and go and listen to what god is saying amen she mentioned and i'm i'm not going to go through the whole thing it's just something she said at the beginning of her sermon and and she mentioned that you move from an external to a internal relationship and i'm saying relationship because i'm talking about the relationship today so you on the outside but you move to the inside as you are transformed you become an insider do we all understand what it means to be an insider hmm? you have access to something that the outsiders don't have you come from the outside to the inside god giving you a new heart amen a new spirit he says he will remove the heart of stone give you a heart of flesh to become part of god's household please note what i said listen carefully become part of god's household you need a total transformation amen, amen. say to your neighbor i need to totally transform <laughs> I need to move from me to we. I need to move from me to we. Yeah. Amen. Yes. I need to move from what I want to what others want. I need to want to from what I can get to what I can give. Amen. You see anybody that becomes part of a family starts at the bottom yeah? the baby is born it has to learn something over the next 18 20 years and sometimes even beyond that as children of god we start as babies and we grow and we slowly become meat eaters amen we eat solids we become adult christians yet there are christians that have been children of god for many years they are still drinking milk amen they haven't grown they haven't moved they haven't realized the truth amen you 
You do it one step at a time. Amen. So let's delve a little bit deeper today. What will it take to fully move to the inside? Hmm? To become part of God's household. To be a family member. Some people say they are family, but they're not family. It's only when you become real family that you become privy to the things of that household. So, let's read today's main scripture. Amen. And it comes Mark 3, verses 31 to 35. Mark 3. 31 to 35. Amplified version says, Then his mother and his brothers arrived. Whose mother? Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called for him. A crowd was sitting around them and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. And he replied, Are you listening carefully? Who are my mother and my brothers? Look at those who are sitting, looking at those who are sitting in a circle around him. He said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God by believing in me and following me, he is my brother and sister and mother. Amen. Let's just close our eyes and pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for another day, another week. A seventh week of the year already, Father. And we are still here. We are still waiting to see what it is that 2024 is going to deliver, Father. We thank you for your, for your word this morning that we will open our ears and our hearts and hear that our spirits will, will jump in us in excitement of knowing what it is to be a member of your family, Father. We thank you. I thank you that I will be the vessel this morning, not I that speak, but your word that speaks. The Spirit, welcome in this house, in the honor seat, Father, present, and that everybody just forget about everything that goes on around and focus on what the word says today. We ask this in your mighty name, and all that believe said, Amen. Amen. Obey the Lord, and an unequal family experience awaits you. You know, we're used to our human families, no? and human families can be a treacherous place sometimes. No? It depends who has favor and who does not have favor. And who is in a bad mood and who is in a good mood. And who didn't get and who got. You see, in fleshly life, life in the family is all about circumstances. I mean, we're not talking about a fleshly family. We are talking about a spiritual family. I mean, it is really, or it is really a perfect thing to belong to the family of Christ. There's no individual plan for what I want. There's a corporate plan for what we all want, with a good outcome for everybody. So... This is the theme for the scripture that we're reading today. This is where we're going. The household. There it is. The household of Jesus. The household. I didn't say the family because family is just singular for me. Household is we are inside together in one. Amen. So the word here is intended to teach us that Jesus Christ not only established his kingdom, and a new nation. He also established a new family. This is a family categorized by deep-seated obedience to expose the will of God. A family that sticks together that be that uh, better than best friends. 
because it is a household and the household of God. We are governed by God's laws, although we are not held by them. We still are obedient to those laws. Amen. This passage presents Jesus' vision for a new community where spiritual kingship and not physical relationships is essential to the foundation of the family. Jesus was redefining family. He was reorientating the thinking of his followers. He was rearranging relationships. He was changing the way that we have relationships. He was com comforting his disciples of his relationship to them. He was revealing the mark of a true Christian. It is absolutely clear that the only obedient, uh, that only obedience validates that there is a relationship with Jesus. Only through obedience. You are not like this with Jesus. You're not talking to Jesus like I talk to my wife or to my friend. Your relationship is to do as the word says. Who is the word? Jesus. Obedience. In the scripture it becomes clear that the crowd assumed that the uh, blood relationship took precedence with Jesus. But Jesus defined that the most significant relationship as being in a household relationship with the Father, being in a household relationship with the Father, Father God. And therefore, with Him. Such a relationship is inseparable from absolute obedience to God's will. That is God's word. God's will is God's word. When a person becomes a true follower of Jesus, they are called to a whole new world, including to a new set of relationships and ultimate devotions. The closing works works. The closing word in Mark 3 reveals it to us. He doesn't put his family, his blood family, before his spiritual family. Amen. What matters is the spiritual family. They become most important. Amen. Households normally have family members on the inside and crowds outside. No? There's a lot of people outside that would like to be on the inside. No? Especially when uh, you have some moolah, no? rich family. Everybody wants to, wants to be in the house. They want to be friends. They want to be part of that family because there's benefits. Amen. So in God's family, when they realize that there's benefits, greater benefits that you'll get nowhere else, but they're on the outside. It's very easy for them to get on the inside. But there are other people that are on the outside that will remain on the outside. Hallelujah. But you see in God's well, here in this story this morning, the whole situation is inverted. It's swapped around. Mark says, And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent him, sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside, seeking you. The present account picks up in verse 20 to 21 where verses 20 to 21 left off. So let's just read verses 20 and 21, just so that we are up to speed. It says, Then he came to the house in Capernaum, and the crowd, crowd formed again. So many people that Jesus and his disciples could not eat a meal together. When his own family heard this, they went to take custody of him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. Amen. You see what family can do to you? Huh? I can say with confidence that even in this house, the same thing happened. Where somebody was taken out by their family. Out of this family. Blood family took out somebody that was part of this family. That was destined for greater things because God called them here. Amen. This happens every day. 
friends and family who say things to you to discourage you, to take you out of God's family. Amen. You see, verses 22 to 30 record what happened perhaps as his family were making the journey. The scribes from Jerusalem, probably arrogantly having forced their way through the crowd, confronted Jesus and sought to discredit him with the ridiculous claim that he was casting out devils by the devil. Amen. They might have been inside the house. Now, this is, a, this is very important. I said this earlier. They might have been inside the house, but they were outside the household. Some people try to force their way in. Again, I'm going to say, in this family, we've seen people trying to force their way in for their own benefit, for their own agenda. But they don't last because they do not have a connection. Amen. God will do the cleaning. God will remove the obstacles. So they might have been on the inside, but they were outside of the household. As Jesus concluded, con as Jesus concluded that encounter, his family arrived. Assuming that he needed to be restrained for his own safety, they sent word to Jesus calling him. They had likely traveled the 40 kilometers from Nazareth to Jerusalem to rescue him from himself. Perhaps they thought they could take him back to Nazareth, Nazareth and restore him to common sense. I believe Mark is using a show of words here. Jesus had called 12 men to himself to send them on his behalf. Here the family of Jesus sent someone to call Jesus away from what he was supposed to be doing. Amen. Here they are thinking that they know what's going on, yet they have no idea. So will your friends and family think they know what is better for you. But the only one that knows what is better for you is God Almighty himself. And you the only one that can ask God for direction. When you go to your friends and family and say, hey, what do you think? Is that family member even in touch with God? Is that family member even on the same level of understanding of God's word as you are? No, you should go to someone who is on the same level or even on a higher level, closer than what you are to God, and talk to him. Who's that? Your real spiritual family will give you the best advice that you can ever ask. When we counsel couples, one of the rules we say is never share your troubles Trials and tribulations in your relationship with your brother, your sister, or your friend. Because they will forever hold that against your partner. And it will make it their business to destroy your relationship. Even though you have made it up. The same in the kingdom of God. If you open the door to them to remove you from Christ's kingdom, they will succeed. Amen. Jesus was spending time with those called from the outside to be on the inside. Did you hear that? He was spending time with those on the outside who were called to be on the inside. There are many people on the outside that need to come to the inside. And God is just waiting for you to call them. In obedience. And now his family was on the outside calling him to leave those on the inside and the disciples. You can be sure the disciples were watching him closely. The disciples had left and followed Jesus. We know that at least in the case of James and John, they left their family and their family fishing business to follow him. They responded to the radical call of Jesus to become insiders. I want you to put yourself in their position. We have to put ourselves in his or their position. Here comes a man. They don't even know this man. Huh? They don't have a clue who he is. And he says to him, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Huh? What do you mean? And my brother, this guy, he's confused. Isn't that the response people will make? 
No, they, they, what does it say? They put down everything they did and they followed him. Faith comes by hearing. The rest comes by your actions. The rest comes by how you grow. The rest comes by your response. The rest comes by obedience. No matter how dark the passage is, if you have to walk through it, you have to walk through and trust God that he will take you through. Amen. You see, their response would radically affect their relationships. Jesus made it clear in the scene before. Jesus said, well, Jesus used this scene to drive home an important point. The priority of relationships in his kingdom. The priority. Relationship with Jesus is key. Number zero. One is too far down the list. Amen. Do you get what I'm saying? Before anything. Zero. Oops. There you are. When one is there, you will already take in the first step. Before that, Jesus' relationship. When your eyes open, it's Jesus. The disciples, of course, needed to understand this lesson. After all, most, if not all, the disciples were from this region, and so the household ties would be strong. But Jesus helped them to gain a new perspective on and a new importance of family relationships. The relationship with Jesus and those who follow him as long as the first remains first and the second remains second, all is one. You can't be like a wave in the ocean. This way you go. First year, second, first, second, no. first, 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 first. Amen. Jesus' mother Mary has mentioned it may be at this point that she not fully understood the uniqueness of her son. However, I think it perhaps is the pain of submitting to the truth she knew and it was too painful for her. The fact that she knew he was the son of God. She knew he was God in man. Amen. Having witnessed his intense schedule and the various pressures that his ministry was placing on him, his mother and son tried to put him to take a break. They concluded that he must be out of his mind. After all, just looking at his behavior, he was preaching that the kingdom of God has come and the clear implication is that he would be embodied. He was the embodiment of this kingdom. In fact, it is clear that he's, he thought that he was the king of this kingdom. But we know he didn't think that he was that. Further, he repeated preaching, but was preaching and teaching this in his ministry. He was healing and delivering the demonized. And this had put him in great odds with the religious powers that be. We know the questions that were up. We see how they challenged him in everything that he did. It is one thing to embarrass the local scribes. It was quite another to provoke the scribes from Jerusalem. The family of Jesus could only conclude that he must be out of his mind. So to protect him, they sought to restrain him. Some have suggested that they intended on tricking him to kidnap him, but they would have nothing. we would have nothing of it. When Jesus was born, Joseph and Mary took him to the temple to be circumcised and named. Simeon met them and pronounced that Jesus was the Messiah and that he would be victorious, yet opposed. Simeon also pronounced the ominous warning to Mary, the sword will pierce your own soul. Also, that's Luke 2, 33 to 34. In other words, Mary lived for 30 years under the shadow of the cross. The pain of his death was perhaps too much for her to bear, so she wanted to restrain him from more public publicity and from more conflict. If so, this would be understandable, but also wrong. <laughs> Think about your own circumstance. You know that as a child of God, you are going to face challenges. 
But you also know as a child of God that there are great blessings in store for you. You also know that God is there to support you. He's got your back. Yet, we want to make our own plan. Amen. And this is what we see here. His family trying to make their own plan, yet the plan is already written in blood. It's not going to change. You get a sense from the tone of the text that the crowd was expecting Jesus to immediately stop what he was doing and give preference to his family. You see how culture is now? We will stop what we're doing and we will go and do what our brother and sister want us to do. Yet there was another plan. Yet we were supposed to be in a different place where God had put us so that we can have a blessing. And now we step into a place where our brother brings us or our sister brings us and turmoil, death, and all the things that shouldn't happen happens because you're in the wrong place. Amen. In fact, some had criticized Jesus for the way he responded. The crowd doubted, doubtless expected him to make way for his physical family, but his response was rather shocking. It seemed as if he ignored their call. Why? His family calling for him was not merely a simple request for a portfolio company. The word seeking is used ten times in Mark with reference to Jesus Christ. And in each case, those seeking him were driven by their own agenda. You see? Ten times. Jesus was approached, looking, looked for, but they had their own agenda. People come into your life with their own agenda. People come into the house of the Lord with their own agenda. Amen. We need to learn that it's not our agenda that counts. The more you drive your own agenda, the more you will fail. The more you have onto your own agenda, the less you will be blessed. Hallelujah. The family of Jesus was not was not seeking Jesus to submit to follow him. On the contrary, they were seeking him, assuming they knew what he was best. They were seeking him contrary to God's will. This is a case of wrong-headed love. Like Peter, many in the church still suffer from this what they call malady confusion. Matthew sixteen twenty-one to twenty-two. Likewise. It appears that the biological family of Jesus was more committed to the agenda to his. We must note that point that Mark, Mark is making. Familial relationship was no guarantee of access to Jesus. The fact that she was and they were his blood family did not guarantee access to Jesus. Being blood family of the king does not give you access to to the royal throne room, unless he says you can access that area. Amen. As Jesus would make it clear, spiritual proximity to him is not a matter of flesh and blood. This was an important principle for the crowd to understand. We need to understand. The only way to access Jesus is through spiritual connection. Followed by the Spirit of God. True to Him, committed in all that you do. This is not the first time that Jesus' family was at odds with His mission. About 18 early years earlier, when Jesus was 12 years old, He was at the temple with His parents and perhaps His siblings. As the family departed from home after the religious festival, Jesus remained behind interacting and amazing the scribes. We know the story. Where Jesus was debating with it. Elders in the church or in the synagogue. And they were amazed by his wisdom then already. His parents only realized after a full day's journey that he was not with them. They immediately returned to Jerusalem where they found him in the temple. In a rebuke, they informed him that him of the anxiety he caused them. He replied both forthrightly and respectfully, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? For whatever reason, they didn't know this. 
not be cords. And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. You see, sometimes we are clouded and not understanding exactly what it is that's happening. But we have to prevail and wait for God to open our eyes. We have to trust that God will open our eyes. We have to know that God is going to reveal something to you at the right time, should you be in the right place. I mean, the whole day they traveled and they didn't notice it was God. Even though he had being virgin born, even though his birth announcement was heralded by angels, even though the kids paid him homage, yet they did not understand. That's how we are blinded from the truth. Here they are, they actually were there. The events happened, people told them. But they still did not understand the full truth of what was happening. Even Mary, and the reference scripture there, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. No doubt, Mary held the scribes and Pharisees in high esteem. It perhaps would be, have confused her when they began to contradict and accuse her son. Consider also that Jesus was a human being. He was in the flesh. He's like us now. Not everybody knew that he was God in flesh, but Mary knew. Amen. You know. You have been enlightened. What is it that you do with that enlightenment? Are you also blinded? Are you also not sure? Amen. Say to your neighbor, are you sure? About Yeshua? <laughs> yes, he was God in man, but there was no exceptional beauty that would indicate deity. As the Christmas hymn puts it, veiled in the flesh is the God had seen, yet no one saw it clearly. Even Mary would need the power of the Holy Spirit to see that Jesus was God's Son. In fact, I think that it was a disgrace, but it was the grace from God that she did not see this clearly. See, sometimes God blinds us for a very good reason. Can you imagine the burden of carrying such a revelation? Imagine 30 years knowing that you are living in the very presence of God. Think back of the effect that such a communion had on Moses and Isaiah. Think of Peter's encounter on the shore when the light broke in and he realized that he was in the presence of God. He fell to the ground and cries out, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Luke 5 verse 7. Of course, even the disciples would father, falter in their faith. Even with such experience like this, along with Matthew 16, 13 to 20 and the numerous miracles of the that unveiled the day, Peter would fail to maintain consistent belief. And we know Peter, he was like the naughty child. He was always in trouble. Eh? He was always in the wrong place. He's always doing the wrong thing. Always had a big mouth. And his mouth was in pain. But yet, he came out victorious. There's a difference between how Jesus responded to him and how he responded then. When he was 12 years old and his family rebuked him, he went down with them and came to Nazareth, Nazareth and was submissive to them. But not now. Now Jesus had already been baptized and anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was on a mission establishing his kingdom. This time, he did not heed their call. Instead, he continued to do what he had and told his parents, oh, dad, right. this time he did not heed the call. Instead, he continued to do what he had, told his parents, 
18 years earlier. He was in his father's house spending time with his new family. How much time do you spend with your family, your spiritual family? How often do you communicate with your spiritual family? How often do you interact with your spiritual family? Jesus came to the Father's house to restore it, indeed to recreate it. Malachi 3 verses 1 to 4 says, Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will prepare and clear the way before me, and the Lord, the Messiah, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, saying the Lord of, says the Lord of the host. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refining fire and like a laundress soap, which removes impurities and uncleanliness. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, the priest, and refine them like gold and silver, so that they may be present to the Lord's grain offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as the days of the old and as of the ancient years. This was symbolized by his cleansing the temple on two separate occasions, but all along, he knew that a new multi-ethnical spiritual, not spartal temple will become the new house. The new household of God. You and me. The temple of God. Housing the spirit within us. Amen. I don't think you even realize the power that you carry. The glory that has been bestowed upon you as a child of God. Don't even use that. Amen. His biological family come could become a part of this family, but they did not take priority of so even though your family your fleshly family is important they are important you should never throw them away amen they can become part of God's spiritual family but that would be their choice amen but in first place comes God's family Every earthly loyalty, if it is made central, becomes idolatry. We spoke about idolatry a few weeks ago. Amen. We make it our God. Every earthly loyalty, if it's made central, becomes idolatry. And if idolatry eventually dis will destroy the worship. Will you be the kind of family that has Jesus' agenda as its own? Will you set Jesus as your agenda? That is the question to you. In Mark's next record, Jesus responds to his family and he answered them, Who are my mothers and my brothers? And looked about, and those that sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. As mentioned, he was. He was very counter culture. Some would even say he was rude in his response. Think about it. He's saying to his mother and his brothers, Who is my mother and my brother? Won't you feel rejected if your son or your daughter says that to you? And you get the point? But we know Jesus and he would never violate God's law. But because we know him, we should not be surprised of him speaking the truth, clearly and without apology. We should never apologize for the truth. Amen. The implication here is not so much the family relationship. Because they are insignificant, but rather that the higher priority call to discipleship is in the light of the proclamation of the kingdom. It must 
จกเราใช่ไหมใช่ไหม We want to be careful when going too far and concluding that family is not important. I've already said this. On the contrary, Jesus rebuked those who played fast and loose with God's word to avoid familial responsibility, to care for their parents. As we will see at the cross, Jesus was concerned about the welfare of his mother. Being God's family is such a joy. We should do all we can to produce one. And I'm not just talking about where we're sitting here, but our own families at home. In today's life, in today's environment, family is so loose. Each member is busy with their own thing. Children are doing their own thing. Father and mother are doing their own thing. There's no Later, some of Jesus' siblings would come to repent and faith. We know James and Jude, all the Lord's brothers, may be two of these. There's a deliberate use about the word brother, which can be used or translated as cousin. Regardless, we know that Mary believed, along with at least some of his siblings, the point that Jesus was emphasized is that. His family was not limited to biological family. We need to believe and then behave like we believe that God saves household as it means to fulfill His household. Those who have been believing households must never take this blessing for granted. Those that have family that are in the kingdom, hey, it, 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 it is so different from where you're the only one in that family that believes. Believe me, it's a struggle. Amen. Especially where there's culture involved, it can be very difficult. We should encourage others that God saves households and means, and the means towards that end is the church. We are that family that do that. You see, something that highlights it is he says, looking about at those who sat around him is a powerful and loving picture of God's all-inclusive love. All-inclusive love. He didn't just look in one place. He looked at everybody and he said, all of these are my family. I love all of these people. You mean? If you're sitting aside and you're feeling separated, remember, When you said yes to Jesus, He said, "You are my family. You are included in this house." Amen. You see, it's only by the grace of God. That we become part of His family. You don't just fit in. You have to be committed. You have to make a decision to say yes. I am going to make Jesus the most important in my life. I wish it. In my capability to explain the difference that God makes in your life when you seriously commit to Him. Amen. When Sunday comes, I have to be here because I made that commitment. When Wednesday comes, we have to be there because we made that commitment. We cannot decide. I'm tired today. I'm not going to be there. When somebody phones and they cry out, we have to support them. But that doesn't just go for the pastor, the, the, the leader in the house. It goes for every single person. And when we do a job, a task, should I rather call it, we must do it with 
all of ourselves, not our father, but everything. God is calling us today and is saying, become part of my household. But to be a member of my household, there's a few rules that need to be applied. I said to the kids this morning, when you're in my house, there are some rules that need to be applied. Not your rules, but my rules. In Jesus' house, it's his rules. Stop making your own rules. Apply his rules. What is his Scripture is full of his Do we live by rule? We are obedient to his rule. Because we know that in his love we are saved. By his blood we are saved. Amen. Another gift, if you were not a part of his household, do you think that you would have had the blessing and protection that you have? Amen. That is how God works. If you are his family member, he will go out of his way. Even if you were in an accident lying there, because that death's bad. The fact that you're lying there, is that you and restore you. Those are the things that happen in our daily lives teach us things. Are we applying his rules? When somebody makes us angry, are we applying his rules? When somebody does something wrong, are we applying his rules? When we see somebody falter, are we applying his rules? Look after my widows and orphans. First, seek my kingdom. I will not give you of myself. Lost my place. Again, a distinguishing factor in our lives. Jesus responded, and his response was not driven by sent sentimental or discriminational factors. Rather, it was driven by truth. Jesus said, well, Jesus then made it clear the essential attribute of his household. Who, whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister. This is called elsewhere in scripture, the obedience of faith. According to Jesus, the household of God is characterized by obedience to God's will. Anyone can be an insider who sits at Jesus' feet and does the will of his father. I think it was Mary of Mar and Malachi, no? The one was at Jesus' feet, and the other one was in the kitchen. Look at that story and related to the situation. Who was outside and who was inside? And then, yet the outsider wanted to accuse the insider. Yet they were completely wrong. Jesus was not teaching me, nor did he teach anyway. That one becomes a member of God's family by good works. Please understand. Obedience, in other words, is not the root of the household entrance. It is, however, the fruit that reveals household membership. So what does the fruit look like? What does Jesus mean by doing the will of God? When Jesus spoke of doing God's will, he was not speaking of the personalized plan of each believer's life. He was not speaking of God's discretive will. No, Jesus was speaking of God's will as revealed by Jesus, the word of God. That is, Jesus was speaking of that which God commands of all people as revealed in God's word. The mark 
of the child of God, the mark of belonging to Jesus' family, is faithfulness to God's word. Submissiveness to God's word distinguishes the siblings of Jesus. Okay? Submitting. Are you submitting to God's word? Question today for you. Are you really submitting to his work? Are you busy with your own things or are you busy with God's things? Amen. Jesus was obedient to the Father's will and word. So must his disciples be. If we want to know something of what this looks like, all we need to do is to listen to what Mark has written. So we have seen Jesus to do the will of God by either doing or teaching the following. Being baptized, identified with the people of God, repenting and believing the gospel of God as proclaimed by the Son of God. Answering the call to follow Jesus as his disciples proclaimed the gospel of God. Committed to the kingdom of God and being with Jesus. In each of these, the word of God is sent. Acts 38. The word of God commands us to repent and believe the gospel. And also, the word of God commands us to be baptized. John 12, 26. The word of God calls us to follow Jesus. Mark 16, 15. The word of God commands us to preach the gospel. Matthew 6.33, the word of God commands us to seek the kingdom of God. 1 John 3.23, the word of God commands us to be with Jesus. So to conclude, con obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Do you believe? The answer is, are you obeying? See John 8.29-31. Jesus made it clear that, the ones, that one's relationship to him had everything to do with the belief demonstrated in obedience. It had nothing to do with the genealogy or anything to do with the grace. With grace, the grace and faith manifested in obedience. Amen. You see, disciples are different. In his prayer on the night he was betrayed, Jesus said to the one that one's relationship to God's truth, that is God's word, is that it sets one apart from the word. Those, and it's John 17, 17, those who are spiritual outsiders foolishly follow their own will. But those who are insiders faithfully follow God's will. They don't merely know, they don't just know it, they do it. Do this? They don't merely subscribe to it, they submit to it. They don't merely listen to it, they live it. That's Faithful, obedient to God's word is God's word for you. It is God's word for his children. It is the characteristics of his pastor. When someone hears the call of, the call of God, the Holy Spirit they are being called from being an outsider to become the insider. Status of insider Outside is determined by one's proximity and receptiveness of Jesus. Not physical proximity, but rather personal person and measured by obedience to God's word. On which side is it? There's a children's Sunday school song called One Door. It goes one door and only one. And yet, it has two sides. Inside and outside. On which side are we? That is an important question for all of us. Let me put it in another way. Are you an insider or an outsider? The answer is found in verse 35. Are you doing the will of God? If you are a member of the household of God, then say goes, like father, like son. Paul exhorts Christians, as yet we can be followers of God. Ephesians 5, 1 to 2, we like to intimidate, but intimidate but to imitate God's will into our own will. God's desires are our desires. God's word is to be our commanding will. Jesus proves he was of God's family by doing the will of God. Hear these words of the writer in Hebrews. Listen carefully. Therefore, when Christ enters into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but instead you have prepared a body for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices, for the sin you have taken, no 
Then I said, Behold, my son, do you know what I'm Even for the wife of the extent of eternal homesickness and the cross for the sake of the God. Jesus demonstrated this commitment to do the will of God when he took the body God prepared for him, perfectly living according to God's will and in word in that body. And then he offered up his life and his life blood in that body. Because he did the will of God perfectly, the Father vindicated him by raising him from the dead, and now he lives to save everyone who comes to him with a heart of repentance, a heart that is committed to do the will of God. There's a loving word for those whose family reject the faith. Your family is much, much larger than that. Amen. Amen. Let's come before you. Let's pray. Close our eyes. Let's clear our minds. Let's clear our hearts. Let's ask ourselves how committed am I? How much do I understand about what God wants in my life? Am I prepared to take the next step? Father, I just thank you right now for your word this morning, Father, for your teaching. With our ears here, with the hearts be filled. Let us make up our minds once and for all to decide what it is that we want to do. Half measure just will not work. God, we ask right now, pull us, help us, lift us, so that we may shine your glory, that we may live the life that you desire for us to live. A member of your family, a member of your house. I praise your name. I give you the glory and honor. If there's anybody here that wants to just ask for forgiveness, now is the moment. Anybody who wants to recommit their way to Lord Jesus, now is the time. To stand before him and ask for forgiveness. Ask for him to fill you with his power and glory. Thank you. 